Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. And I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design. Today, man, we're going to be talking about the nuke face issues of uh, Alan Moore, Steve Bissett, and John Toddlebin's Swamp Thing. But first, I want to invite you guys to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. And uh, by doing so, that mitigates the kayfabe effect, which is whenever we talk about uh, books in our newest videos, uh, put the videos out in the morning, by midday, early afternoon, the stuff we talk about can be prohibitively expensive if you can find it at all online. Also, Jimmy and I are going to be at Heroes Con at the end of the month uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Come stop by, say hi, say what's up, and rock those cartoonist kayfabe shirts. Also, if you watch these videos to the very end, that helps goose the YouTube algorithm to push our video content out to other comic book loving YouTube viewers who uh, may not know our channel so well. That helps us uh, build our subscriber base. And we did hit 62,000 subscribers recently, but we're trying to get 6.2 million. So we have a ways to go and we appreciate all your help. Uh, without further ado, man, the one uh, DC Alan Moore co-created character that hasn't been exploited to death or should I say exploited at all, beyond these two issues, the great nuke face. Yeah. Man, one of the memorable two-issue pieces in Alan Moore's Swamp Thing run. Yeah, I think I think his name is like, it's a great name. It's just like his design. Like if, like if his design had a little more punch to it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, you know how it goes, man. Whenever you introduce a character and you see their first iteration... It largely is kind of weak, yeah. and it evolves. It's a game of... I remember Ron Friends calling costume design... Like, it's a game of telephone. Yeah. Whereas the more artists who put their hands into it, uh, the gnarlier it gets. You mm -hmm. know, think of Venom. Like, how Venom was pretty subdued. It was yeah. a mean Spider-Man. And then what it became with the mandible jaw that's mm -hmm. distended, all that kind of stuff. That, that's, that's a process of evolution. So you just need to draw Nuke Face a bunch. You know, if Nuke Face looked like this in the comic, that might have <laughs> helped. Like, th this is a really cool cover. It's really incredible. scary. Looks like, looks like a VHS. Yeah, or something. you're right. Yeah, yeah, like the most, like, exploitative, like, horror VHS. Great graphic design, kind of a skull. You know, and the, um, just kind of, like, the storytelling and the design of this cover is really cool, too, because... You got this newspaper element, which we'll talk about more. It's like all through the issue. And then, um, you know, Swamp Thing is kind of like on fire or burning from the inside or whatever. And steam's coming off. And, and then you have like the newspaper is burning. And, you know, it's just it, it, everything's working together. There's a lot of production that has gone into making this cover work. Yeah. A lot. Mm -hmm. Because also, where do you... is <laughs> Which one of these bastards is just sitting around collecting nuclear fallout yeah. fucking articles to I wonder, paste up? I wonder if that's Alan Moore, like, collecting them. Because it's, like, such a part of this story. And almost in a way where it's, like, so much effort is being put into that aspect that's kind of more like, like a tonal thing. And, and, and really has more to do with, like, Alan Moore at this period feels like maybe through comics I can like educate you. Maybe I can teach you and maybe possibly even change the world, you know, change things through, you know, and, and pretty soon he, you know, kind of gets rid of that whole notion that like once superheroes and, and stuff shows up, it, it just ruins everything. Like, you, can, you know, nobody's going to understand what you're saying, but this is a really, um, a, re a really serious attempt at that. I, you know, it's funny you say that because because I I think of it in different terms. Yeah. Uh, I think of it as it's Alan Moore. He's not, you know, the standard werewolf, the standard vampire. All that mm -hmm. stuff is is quaint. Yeah. At this point in the 1980s, let's take a look at what some real potential horrors are. And through my uh, Three Mile Island was just a couple of years before this. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And and there's all these allusions to Pennsylvania. Right. Uh, nuclear waste is showing up on on the shores of uh, Wildwood, New Jersey, or whatever the fuck. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, he, I mean, he he feels like there's like some urgency here that like I can, you know, engage with like a real serious thing and something that he cares about. Yeah. Uh, you know, at a point, you know, this is like early '80s. You know, kind of like before. Let's see, what year is it exactly? Eighty-five. Eighty-five. It's like kind of before, you know, sort of like late 80s, early 90s, that sort of second wave of, like, sort of environmental 
stuff kind of, you know, came to the fore. And so he sets up, he's got this, um, this like device he wants to use of like these newspaper clippings. And so he starts with like, um, and it's very atmospheric that like there's just like newspaper kind of blowing it, which is like a kind of pollution to begin with. It's 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 thematic rhythm yeah. because senior people, the 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 men of the town, are dumping toxic waste, but the boys of the town are dumping their uh, their the newspapers that they newspapers. didn't sell. Yeah, I mean I. I've done that myself, not particularly <laughs> newspapers, but where like you get you get a couple bucks to like put some uh, flyers in people's windshield, and then you're you've been doing it for like an hour or two, and you're like, shit, I got this huge stack, what am I? and then you just like you know throw them down the <laughs> sewer or something. What we're looking at here is some one of the greatest collaborations in uh, mainstream comics, uh, and I I do mean great, and uh, that is not something a word that we abuse when it comes to this sort of thing so i am talking about the the uh, costanza lettering and i'm talking about tatiana wood's color on top of the toddle bin steve Bissett artwork that is you know telling the story laid out by alan moore there's not one weakness to the creative team uh in this era of uh the, the swamp thing stories looking for a new way to enjoy your favorite comics and manga Comixology Unlimited has you covered. With Comixology Unlimited, you get an unlimited access to an unrivaled library of over 40,000 digital comics, manga, and graphic novels featuring content from over 125 publishers and thousands of independent creators from around the world. And if that's not enough, you can also save up to 15% when buying select new and current comics. Try Comixology Unlimited today with a free 30-day trial and then just $5.99 a month afterwards. For details, visit Amazon.com slash Comixology Unlimited. And, yeah, and so this, like, sort of nuke face guy, he kind of shows up, and he's talking as kind of like this parody of, like, Americans. This is like, you know, Alan Moore doing his, you know, like, you know, oh, this big bombastic, like, you know, Reagan era kind of, you know, it's 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 a bright, beautiful day or whatever. Fuck, fuck the commie reds kind of talk comes, comes through. Um, he's kind of like... Foghorn Leghorn or yeah. something, where he's completely oblivious to to. In fact, he 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 he's hearing things. Yeah, everybody's name is Ed. Right, he's just like steamrolling over everybody. He's got this story going on in his head, and you're just kind of part of it. Rodney Dangerfield would have played uh, Nuke, Nuke <laughs> Face, and if there was like you know the third Swamp Thing movie, yeah, with Heather Locklear or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, and and it's also like it also made me think of um, the the movie The Master. Uh, with Joaquin Phoenix and, and um, uh, where it's it's like Joaquin Phoenix was like he was one of these guys who would like drink lighter fluid. He would just drink. He would like drink anything you know to have alcohol. And right. He was like, <clears throat> I think that's Lady Bird Johnson did that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She drank like perfume and stuff. And so he w he could do it. But then he'd be hanging out with some other guy. And he's like, like, take a take a belt at this, and then the guy would like die or something. You know, it kind of reminded me of that. Yeah, man, because he's, his constitution has been built up from uh, the stuff. And the way he talks about it is an addiction. It's, yeah. it's uh, you know, I need a little hair of the dog. Mm -hmm. I need a taste, as uh, those old timers would say. And never a wasted panel, never a wasted moment. And nothing happens by accident in these voluminous Alan Moore scripts that yeah. get translated into visual imagery with narrative value. So one motif that we'll see throughout whenever you're exposed to nuke face is the vegetation uh -huh. around this guy, you know, like yeah, fruit when, is like rotting off the tree and yeah. falling as, as he passes. Yes. By. Yeah. And that's a constant thing that we're going to see often. And it's something that can be easily overlooked. Uh -huh. You know, the Costanza lettering is very subdued uh, to, to indicate this stuff, but that none of that is by accident. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he's, he, it feels like he's like some kind of metaphor, like his addiction is like this addiction to nuclear power, this like sort of destructive, you know, thing that that like you know we we in this era have become, uh, you know, we rely on it and you know, and it's killing us. And this fella diagonal Bob, which is funny because my brother's name is Bob. So yeah, it's, Bob it's Ed and Bob. Yeah, in Pennsylvania. I, I, I wondered if like you know your first time reading this or whatever, and he's like Ed, Ed, are you listening? And being like <laughs> like creeped out for a second, you know. <laughs> Not the first Ed and Bob tandem in comics, man. There was mm -hmm. the man bull issues of a uh, of a uh, Incredible Hulk that McFarlane drew, mm -hmm. and of course Ed lives, Bob dies. So I showed my little brother, look, you died in this comic. 
And this guy is all too willing, man, to take some sips of what Nuke, Nuke Face is presenting to him. Look what's um, uh, opposite it. It's a you Fig know? Newtons. Yeah, a Fig, a Fig Newton maze for the kids in, in the audience. Newtons are fruit and cake. And here's our guy. Yeah, the money shot. Now, I promise you, if this character was exploited over and over and over again, like, this face would be losing more flesh. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd be more closer to two face. But that is that is incredible. Yeah. That is fantastic, man. Missing some teeth. Like, you see the sinus cavity and what's left of the nose. He looks a little like Harlan Ellison. <laughs> yeah, like uh, the, the black around the eyes, even. I, I stared at these fingers mm -hmm. for a couple of minutes, man. Yeah. He definitely has some fungal issues going on, man. I feel like this would be a comic that would kind of speak to you. It's kind of, you know, like the sort of uh, nastier side of things. Look at how Total Ben is communicating the wetness in the eyes using hatching, yeah. but then cutting in there with, with some white. Uh, immediately, our guy Diagonal Bob is regretting... Uh, taking a taste mm -hmm. of that stuff. Uh, there was a dude that they wheeled out to all the talk shows and shit in the 90s when that was a thing, man, of a fella who uh, who tried to off himself and drank some sort of like bleach or something yeah. and described that what happened was it's like a fuse. like It's like bur burning a fuse when that stuff goes into you. They did emergency surgery on this fella and, and connected his... They, like his stomach is gone. Yeah. But they connect his intestine with like his esophagus or something. Mm -hmm. It looks like a snake underneath mm -hmm. his skin on his mm -hmm. chest. And this comes to mind. It's just like a very disturbing comic, you know, like that's that's the intended effect. The Tuttlebin inks where the the sort of gray hatches go along with the contour of the planes yeah. that he is drawing is a very instructive thing. You can learn a lot mm -hmm. about drawing uh by looking at that. Not necessarily uh, stealing those marks, right. but just realizing that the stuff that you draw has a volume to it, mm -hmm. and it has a shape to it, and uh, just keeping that in mind, you could twist that up in 3D a little bit more. Never, I can never get a good... It's It says do, it's a dog food can. Owl's dog food, something mm -hmm. like that. Almore. <laughs> we cut to Pennsylvania, the nuclear fallout, and then here's where you get to see little bits of these these articles. Yeah, and they're, they're real articles about, you know, toxic waste and people get, or, or a nuclear waste, nuclear fallout, people, you know, dying from it or getting sick from it. And um, it's it it's all through the story. It gets more and more as it goes on until like the final page where it's like the whole thing. But I think this is like, this is ultimately what Alan Moore was trying to accomplish. He wanted to get you to really think about this issue, this, this like real life stuff. Alan Moore's Swamp Thing owes so much more, not so much to Swamp Thing. It is basically like an 80s version of Steve Gerber's Man Thing. Like this, this whole, these two issues especially are so like a love letter to Steve Gerber. Like where it mainly centers around these like ordinary people, you know, and where it's got some kind of like uh, social or, or some, some kind of like message that is trying to get across this extent, you know, and then being like very artsy in the presentation, like even those collage elements of, of the newspaper, you know, Gerber was doing that kind of stuff, like weird collage, um, a page all of a sudden is like a text piece, you know. What we're looking at here is a, is a married couple who sort of, this fella is realizing that his company is uh, not 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 doing good things when it comes to disposing of their nuclear waste. And I and isn't it funny that he's considered like a wuss amongst the other guys right. in, in the company? Like, oh this guy, man, yeah. he's a he's a big pussy because he doesn't wanna well, dump he, drums of he, this shit into the lakes. Yeah, I mean you think about like, you know, whistleblowers or something, like you know, and, and uh you know, that's kind you know, he, he doesn't like blow the whistle, but he is kinda like, Hey, we shouldn't do this. This makes me think of um Miracle Man. Number fifteen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it replaced that. That's just skin. Right. Skins from people. So that, that you know, Alan Moore's got his bag of, you know, his his, his metaphors that he's putting, his visual metaphors he's, he's putting together. Nuclear panel votes for proposal to start Three Mile Island plant. So, mm -hmm. of course, we know how that ends up. Yeah. yeah, and so, like, Three Mile Island, you got that. And then 
I forget the name of it, but then there's that town. It's not like nuclear, but it's where there was like a mine fire. Yeah, yeah. And it just, it, like this kind of reminds me of that too. I, they, I wonder if he was referencing that. Yeah, as they well. talk about it here. Like he calls it Blossomville, but it's it's Centralia. Centralia, yeah. that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the inspiration for uh, for the Silent Hill video games, and I've had a couple of buds go out there with cameras. And uh, they they checked the spot out. One of the most fascinating things, because yes, it is still burning. Yeah. Yes, only six salty old cusses still live there and probably have the blackest lungs ever. But the visuals that my people brought back, are some of the most f- fascinating things I've mm-hmm. ever seen. Can't can't believe that it exists here in PA. And by the way, the way that happened was it was a mine fire, and it was some Homer Simpson douchebag of the town thought it was a good idea to burn trash right here next to this like coal mine. Mm-hmm. And uh, the town is smoldering underneath the dirt. You know how, like, there's, like, a clay element to dirt? The dirt is now barbs of shattered, like, terracotta, like the vases that your mom has. Mm -hmm. It just looks like that. There is, like, the little red cherry from, like, the end of the cigarette. If you, like, dig around in the dirt, they went to the uh, cemetery there, dude. And the most eerie thing ever is uh, you see the headstones. You see the terracotta crusty dirt all over the place except for perfect coffin shaped plots of grass that are Mm -hmm. still able to grow because that body down Mm -hmm. there is absorbing all that heat yeah it's cooking it's cooking it's done you probably didn't ask to be uh, cremated but you got it yeah time to pay some bills ed piscor and i are working cartoonists the best way to support cartoonist kayfabe buy our comic books red room trigger warnings Issues one through three now available in comic shops everywhere, barring uh, 28 countries and I think 11 comic shops where it's banned. But you can ask for this and order it from virtually any comic shop. Who knows? They might pull them out from under the covers. Red Room Trigger Warnings 3, the second season of Red Room. Every Red Room cover self-contained. So pick up whichever one you find and you'll get a complete story. Along with Red Room Anti-Social Network, the trade paperback of the first season available now wherever books and comics are sold. Hulk Grand Design, Monster Madness, a retelling of the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk. I am writing, drawing, coloring, lettering, the whole shebang, the Grand Design way. And this is available now in comic shops everywhere. Both issues, the complete story of the Incredible Hulk's rich history. Pick that up now wherever comics are sold. And back to our regular scheduled programming. Yeah, so some of that is coming across in these visuals. And Centralia would have happened, uh, just, well... Yeah, I, I think Centralia was before before 85. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, it got, um, the state of emergency, it was it was George Bush, the, the first one, that sort of passed something to, to get, at everybody who wanted to leave could get out of there. Okay. <laughs> and then we got our poor diagonal Bob fella, who is just uh, getting worse and worse for the wear, as... Nuke face continues to filibuster and bloviate mm-hmm. about uh, the, st- the state of the world, all on the uh, quest for more more of the sauce. Yeah, he's like a like a truffling dog or something because like he has to like go underground for it, and then it's like oh they you know they buried it you know in a lake. I, I can't get to that you know. <laughs> As Bob like we we slowly see you know it's a storytelling thing. It's foretelling the Swamp Thing portion of our tale. His teeth are coming out. Yeah, and then just these, it's like he's boiling. You know, he's foaming mm-hmm. at the mouth or something. And then it's this point where it, it's done. It's done. He's not moving anymore. P- pulling out your teeth like a classic dream image. Yeah. But he will not be talking any longer. It's over for him. Look at that arid, radiant sky. Yeah, and it, it, it feels like an echo of that previous page. I don't know if the compositions are the same or similar, but just that, that color scheme. Yeah. Yeah, kind of brings you right back. So it's like now Swamp Thing is in that area. And it's a dream sequence. Uh, but it just communicates his relationship with the environment. Yeah. Because there's probably uh, not much growing mm-hmm. there any longer. Uh, I do wonder, like, is Tatiana Wood to thank for a lot of this this color with the clouds and stuff? you just never seen that yeah. uh, very much in pre-computer color, mm-hmm. you know, mechanical color process. And, comics and um you know swamp thing in in not like a heavy-handed way but he's kind of becoming like a like a eco warrior yeah you know in in this you know in this series and you could sort of imagine if they had sort of gone that way in the 90s or something like with the swamp thing cartoon or you know make him into like a captain planet you know kind of thing uh, oh i mean they did did that was okay because the the ones i've seen 
are just like straight up, you know, monster superhero stuff. I, I haven't seen he's like, so he's like a warrior for the, for the environment. And, and he's got his homies. I think there's like a Native American dude uh-huh. who's, you know, closer to the earth, all that mm-hmm. kind of shit. Remember the song? Swamp Thing. <laughs> you are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the hues and tones and color. Like, this is just a puddle. And Tatiana Wood is using three different colors yeah. in that. And it's fucking gorgeous. And it's all these subdued, lighter hues mm-hmm. and using 100% plates of like yellow and magenta for that deep red. Yeah, like it feels dangerous. I like the way he's drawn in the in this kind of dream sequence because it does it has like a little more of like a Dave McKean kind of um, distortion going on. Framing our guy a lot. Yeah. Really smart. Even just framing him in sh- with shadow here. And again, like he's you know he's the star of the series, but it's like you know we're a bunch of pages in. We're like thirteen you know pages in, and he hasn't. You know, he hasn't shown up too much. This is a different kind of comic. Yeah. And I feel like after this, there's several issues where he ain't nothing but like a little Chia pet. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is like, um, this becomes sort of, you know, like reading the Swamp Things in sequence, this becomes like the beginning of him realizing he has that power to like, just like regenerate himself, you know, teleport basically to wherever there's vegetation. This, the, the landscape and the vegetation that Beset and Tottlebin create, it's it's mind blowing stuff. It makes sense why there was essential swamp thing comics that were on glossy paper printed in black and white. Mm-hmm. Because the stuff that these guys put down and they're very famous like for being experimental. Uh Tottlebin and Rick Veach are the guys that come to mind where they have their like little first grade pencil box that they bring to the conventions. And there's like that little stub at the end of a banana peel in there. There's weird sponges. Mm -hmm. There's brushes that look like they would have no discernible value whatsoever, but they're so important to those guys for getting a lot of stuff. And, and, And you see like he's using black ink for these elements, but then cutting in with white Mm -hmm. and you, you don't pencil that. Yeah. Right. You just kind of find your, like, like Bob Ross or something. And the vegetation specific too. This is like Louisiana Bayou vegetation. Oh yeah. You know, you can't just like draw the bushes in front of your house or whatever. And here are our guys dumping some stuff talking about how that one dude's a pussy. This, this is the point where it struck me as like, Oh, this is like, like a Steve Gerber man thing comic because it would like, I'll bet you could find an exact issue because there's like, you know, guys in hard hats doing, you know, dumping stuff, doing work and that, you know, and then man thing shows up. And of course, all the burning, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff burns in man thing issues. Right. Poor diagonal Bob. Every time we see him. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's melting. He's turning liquid. That red eye, the all knowing eye. So good against all that green. And you could see, like, there's, like, uh, brushes with split hairs that are being used here. Mm-hmm. All these, like, little textures, you know, that's that's not that's not pen work. Learn how to break dance. <laughs> Remember the Alfonso Rivera, Rivera yeah. Uh, infomercial? Yeah, it, and it came with a breakdancing board with his face on it. <laughs> I do believe that was Silver Spoon's era, Alfonso Rivera, <laughs> yeah. not, not uh, Fresh Prince. Right, it was, yeah, it was that, those in-between years. <laughs> that's why his, like, Fresh Prince character was, like, so funny, because he was, prior to that, the coolest guy ever, you know? <laughs> and then he's, like, the biggest nerd ever. Well, he tried to avoid typecasting in a Cinemax horror movie where that involved a very big spider because he definitely played, like, some kind of gangster dude. Mm-hmm. You have to look on IMDb for that one. Nukeface, really, he, he's, like, an innocent. He's he's a buffoon. He's Mr. Magoo. Right. Yeah, and, and, and like those, like, characters like Mr. Magoo, like, everybody else is getting in a car accident, and he's just, like, sailing through. Exactly. Always glowing, so they uh, always use the opportunity to have, like, a lot of black around. Which, which is also kind of, you know, like a, a, um, a, you know, sort of like a commentary on, like, America and American, it just kind of like, you're, you're sort of blundering your way through stuff, you know, and, like, ruining it for everybody, and you're doing great. <laughs> right. 
the vegetation is continuing to just be destroyed everywhere. When you're on that monthly grind, man, having a gutter like that, <laughs> not having to draw in that space, that saves a little bit of yeah. time. Any opportunity for them to get that... That, that great close-up. Yeah, 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 but like, by all means, please take it. Just what Toddlebin does to that is just stellar pen, penmanship. This is when he's salty about the uh, the canisters getting dumped. Well, that's like that's like an addict thing, too, where like you you kind of like play the victim or you know oh why is this happening to and then people feel sorry for you and then and then they get burnt there's those parts in in the uh in the in the wire too where like they put out the tester packs and just throw them and then you see like the crackheads like shuffling around on dirt to get their hands on a a, a free bag of course you got to have the no dumping sign right it it feels like the perfect storm of like an eighties kind of thing because you got all this stuff and then yeah you got like addiction you know this sort of addiction behavior. It's cool because like it just has a character thing. Uh -huh. He he's connected to the radioactivity. Like he's able there. Like he's a Geiger counter well, at he, this point. He is like the anti Swamp Thing. As Swamp Thing is sort of like nature and green and all this stuff. He is like this avatar of like unhealthiness of like illness of of you know death of of nuclear you feel that right there yeah now this is a great moment the way he like burns that thing and this also becomes an alan moore um like thing in his toolbox of like he has this character in top 10 called smacks and he's got this like white handprint on his chest and it seems like it's just a design element and you have like the full you know 12 issue series and it's never explained it's just a design element but then he gets his own spin-off series where you go to his his like home planet or his home dimension and it's like um a uh tolkien-esque lord of the rings kind of world and he's like super embarrassed about it too because everybody thinks he's this huge badass and then like his partner comes home with him and he's actually he feels like he's from some backwoods or he's from this like this like you know silly uh magical land and it's like there was this thing where he fucked up and like this this girl dies as a result. And as she's dying, she like puts her hand on his chest. And then that's all that's left is this way. And it's like this mark of shame that he has to like, like carry through his whole life. And eventually, you know, figures out a resolution to it. But it's like it's it's starting here. That's that's pretty cool. Just drawing wise, this hand really feels like it's impressed into the, yeah. the vegetation. You see you see little bits of it kind of coming around the fingers there. It's it, really pushing in. It's really sensual and evocative. Like, it really does make you think of, like, the times when you're a kid put, putting your hand into some, like, mossy, you know, dirt kind of stuff. And they continue to sell it all the way, man. Like, that hand is really pressed in there. Keeping it pure white is a fantastic choice, especially this moment here when, when he's cloaked in shadow, but they allow that pure white to stay so visible. Mm -hmm. And Tatiana Wood, man, like, that's this is what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. The perfect collaboration of this entire team yeah because that is the move you mm -hmm. leave that pure white yeah and so much of uh comics back in those days uh to to leave a piece of white was to not do your full job right yeah you're getting a, a demotion or, or a demerit <laughs> remco always had the off-brand shit so. yeah i mean i loved i love these toys because it like i was able to get a hercules figure I, you know you're a harry housing guy uh, yeah, into all, and mythology and like all that kind of stuff. And it's like, okay, I can get a Hercules. <laughs> so not only does uh, Duke Face touch him that once, but he's like, hey, what's wrong, bud? And just keeps putting his hands all yeah. over him. But that's not it either, because you know he's going to give Swamp Thing a taste. This is mm -hmm. kind of the funniest shit. And then you got Costanza like showing up right. and, and doing some stuff. Was it in the script? I don't know. But it's smart storytelling yeah. choices. It's it's uh, it's unorthodox. Uh Swamp Thing is fucked up right now, mm -hmm. so allow that to be a little fucked up. It's it's genius comic book making. It's really thoughtful material. Breaking up the panel borders with the smoke mm -hmm. from uh, his from Swamp Thing's chest is really perfect. And look, his stomach is just it's gone. Yeah, we're, this is like the death of the Swamp Thing, and this the pacing of this issue. It's it's unorthodox, and like you see, like. It, it's to sell this ending. Yeah. Because, like, you see, you spend a lot of time watching a guy slowly disintegrate. Exactly. And then, now here's our hero, and he's getting the same treatment, and it's like, 
he's he's fucking dead. Yeah. What are they going to do for the next issue? Yeah. Yeah. And, we, and they haven't established his regenerate like like his uh, teleportation regeneration kind of powers yet. Not at all. This is the kind of cliffhanger that you're 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 twiddling your thumbs for thirty days. Yeah. Really, really great way to end it. Great, great way to end an issue. Next month, Swamp Thing sizzles literally. Don't miss the end of Swamp Thing as we know him in the conclusion of the Nuke Face Papers. Mm -hmm. See you then. That's a great end blur. And yeah, like that's that's like a DC Comics trope: the death of the character on the cover. Now, in in the old days, it would be like, oh, it was all a joke. Superman's okay. Or it happened whatever, on TV. Yeah. And man, what a great opening page! You got all those those um, collage elements. I don't think issue like the first part. Did it have this kind of like um, clipped out lettering for the? It, it did, but it way hmm. more less subdued. No, it wasn't ransom note. Yeah, what? I, yeah, the ransom note style, because that becomes like a thing through. And the swamp thing, I had to read it carefully and slowly. This part two, it's a little more unconventional. It's out of sequence, and and jumps around from character to character, and has a bunch of like chapter breaks, and what looks like just oh, it's the swamp thing title. It turns out this is each, his piece. Yeah, different characters get their little section with the, you know, two dots after it. And this is the Swamp Thing section. Yes. Man. Look at those color holds. And it's an interesting approach because when you're playing with color holds, you always want to have a hundred percent plate. And they right. did that with the cyan, but you rarely ever see a color application behind it. It's usually mm -hmm. over top of white, but this really works, man. The amount of color that Tatiana Wood like puts in even the Swamp Thing yeah, character. Swamp Thing himself is like a whole job. Yeah, to, yeah. to color that all, all that all that's and not just have him be a green or a brown or something. There's oranges. There's several different browns. There's several different greens. It's gorgeous. And this is Swamp Thing basically just talking about how his body is fizzling away. Yeah, describing at a certain point his his jaw his jaw falls off. That's harrowing shit right there, man. We're moving towards taboo. Yeah. Spider baby graphics. <clears throat> He's like, you know, goodbye, Abby. You know, this, you know. It's done. We have the officer who's looking for uh, who found diagonal Bob. Yeah, and this this guy this guy feels like a Steve Gerber character. Like I swear, that there's like a character that runs through uh, Man Thing and uh, Omega the Unknown, and so that it's like this this exact design. <laughs> yeah, just some, uh, you know. Peckerwood, 70s guy. Mm -hmm. Right, big lapels. <laughs> and uh, it starts off at the end, basically, man. Uh, like, yeah. He is moving away from his pregnant wife, who, you know, we established them together in the in previous issue. Yeah, the first issue. And he's moving away, and she doesn't understand why. Yeah, this required some careful reading and some work, you know, on the part of the reader, where I feel like Alan Moore wouldn't do that now. Where he's like, you're. He wants you to be like in the palm of his hand. He he doesn't. He wants you to do as little work as possible. He wants to take you on the journey. Where here it's like, okay, I'm gonna challenge you. I think you need to go read Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he applied. He's like, okay, I can't do that in comics, but I'll go do it in in novels. Go read Prometheus, Promethea. The little kid interpretation of Nuke Face, fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, in the wire. Yo, Omar, I'll be Omar today. You know what it is? It's um, the Fantastic Four when there's kids on the street playing Fantastic Four. And it's like, I'm the thing. I'm Mr. Fantastic. And he's got like sticks with like gloves on, on gardening gloves on the end. Oh, yeah. And, and you're right. Now that I think about it, it's like I, as a creator, would try to make things as easy for the reader as possible. But you're right. Alan Moore's gone the other way. Like, yeah, he is <laughs> like, uh, you're going to uh, sing for your supper when you're reading one of his comics. Because <laughs> that's how I found it. it. It felt a little weird. I'm like, I'm a small, I'm smart. I can handle things. I'm not dumb. Not like everybody says. And I'm reading this. I'm like, I gotta read this. I, I don't. I don't think I, I. I quite get what's going on here. I do. You know, read it very carefully. I was your big brother. And I was looked <laughs> over. Yeah, uh, our guy Monroe. He is is goes to the cops because his wife is missing. Mm -hmm. She disappeared. Man. Yeah, her st and showing it out of sequence. Like her her whole story is you know really interesting. But then they reconnect, and then we end where we began. Yeah, and this is that that uh, bookend effect rather than like Alan Moore often would do it in an issue where you start mm -hmm. off and end the story the same way. Like he started and ended the Monroe section here the same yeah. way. 
we have the landlord lady who also fucks our tenants or, or whatever, mm-hmm. is in love with her tenants, has and, to identify the body. And it feels like Lovecraftian, it does. like the end of a Lovecraft story. Sure, sure. That little white eye on a regular guy, this is the regular dude. Yeah, yeah, it's not like Jason Woodrue or something. It just adds to the horror. Mm-hmm. It's very deliberate. And yeah, they're they're finding uh, the guy from the first the first issue, and he's just a, a puddle. <laughs> he's like in, in, basically in a bag. You know? Yeah, Treasure Monroe. That sounds like such a porn star name. Dressing her in red is such a smart choice when you're going to be pushing this lady out into vegetation. Mm-hmm. You you see a lot of that, like in the kind of horror movies where uh, it's the city slicker who's, who's going off into the woods and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, the lady often wears the red. So that you could easily identify her in those uh, deep space shots when she's running from, you know, the aggressor. And she's wearing a cross and like her, like she, she um, you know, which kind of, you know, helps for like her story. Because she, she she gets to like a, you know, what would Jesus do kind yeah, of little, moment. Little Mother Teresa gimmick right here. Little Florence Nightingale when she sees this crusty little bum that could use maybe a little, little heat, little slumber. Yeah, so she lays lays next to him, you know, the whole night to keep him warm, and then, uh, you know, I feel like that baby ain't kicking anymore, huh? I I mean, I you know, I would think it's like you know gonna be you know um, toxic Avenger, or something. <laughs> yeah, Melvin. It's Melvin's origin. I think they're making a new one of those, by the way. And when, when uh, that's one thing, cartoon came out, the Toxic Crusaders. Yeah. was mm-hmm. was a. Uh, Something that was being pushed. And yeah, so we now we get like a full splash of that moment that we've seen twice so far, but like everybody backing away from her. I wonder if, because it, it is a great page turn moment, and I do wonder if Alan Moore and crew had some agency about where the ads yeah. were placed, because... Yeah, two I, I, of them next to each other makes me think it was like, okay, let's move that ad over to here. Yeah, especially at the at the center spread, which yeah. you would often get some good comic, you know, a good comic mm-hmm. money shot or something. Uh, but you want this on the page turn. Yeah. Absolutely. And yet these, um, these uh, newspaper clippings are just, they're like a design element. They're in there. You're not stopping and reading all of them, but you've been reading enough pages at this point that you've kind of absorbed and, and maybe you're reading more of it as it goes on and it's kind of soaking in. Like if, if maybe you didn't quite know what to make of those, you know, at the beginning. Look at the work that uh, Tatiana has to do just in terms of drawing uh, based on what Tottleben and, and Bassett are, are giving her. Mm-hmm. There's no holding lines on, on any of this stuff. So she has to go in there and draw this shit with, with pure color. This, this panel's really cool where you have sort of like, you know... Print, drawn elements, cartooned elements. Yeah. The kid's getting chased by Nuke Face. So funny. And that, like, hand print is just, like, growing and growing. Like a fuse, you know? Like a fuse is lit. It's just sinking in. Yeah, and and so we're seeing that Swamp Thing moment from page one is now from from Abby's perspective. I always think of this, like, if you put, like, a little eyedropper of, like, a dab of water on a piece Mm -hmm. of cotton candy. Okay, yeah. Right. The set with the diagonal panels, man. And then as a spread, it's a really cool effect mm-hmm. for the gestalt of the whole the whole piece. And I guess this is like reverse order. Like we're seeing her, like we saw her with him and now we're seeing her find Swamp right. Thing, you know, telling and retelling the story. Look at that, man, almost marrying yeah. the uh, diagonal bobs. And he, he gives her a, a goodbye of sorts. Yeah, he's like, this is it, you know. I'm going to try to come back. I'm going back into the green or something, you know. And yeah, the next issue is like, okay, is Swamp Thing dead or is he going to, you know, figure out a way to come back? And then that becomes his part of his bag of tricks. Yeah, in a big way. And like uh, probably the ultimate culmination would be the Batman stuff. Like, yeah, right. Where he's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm now incompatible with the vegetation on Earth. Well, he just takes over Gotham. Like, yeah. like before that, oh, there's, yeah, yeah. there's the vampire story where mm-hmm. he becomes as big as a mountain and it just, like, drops. Yeah, all this, like, fresh water into that, like, muck yeah. that the vampires were living in. Yeah, such a great series. And the way it escalates, and it's kind of like, Moore had to leave. Because it's like, he escalated all the way to the cosmic level. Where do you go? You just gotta, le- like, leave or he, reset. You know? After the Batman stuff, there is a reset. And it's like, he's he's conquered 
the terrestrial Earth. Right. And now he's got to, like, push him out into the cosmos and Adam Strange... It becomes a sci-fi comic. Yeah, yeah, he becomes it's not, know, it's cosmic... Not, it's, it's not gothic horror any longer. Right, he's, he's cosmic swamp thing. Yeah. And it's just, like, you, you see it a lot in manga, that kind of progression, and it's just, like, things get amped up to a point where it's, like, you know, planets fighting each other. Continuing the motif of the fruits. Yeah, we, we come back to Nuke Face. Nuke Face gets, like, the last moment of the story. Doesn't this feel like uh, a two-page spread from Miracle Man 15 yeah, mm-hmm. or something? Yeah, these just, visions of just, hell on Earth. You just need Big Ben. Yeah. And a couple armless mothers and their children. And they're, they're Harlan Ellison posing <laughs> for Nuke Face. And, and Nuke Face is still on the quest, still looking. Heads up, America! He's coming everywhere. Is that Tatiana Wood? Genius idea? Yeah, his because he does, that's another thing that's subtle. He, does, he has like a halo of nuclear glow around him yeah. through the whole story. And then, so all those little clippings you've been seeing all sort of coalesce into this, you know. And everything we said about the ad placement before, it just feels like, because like this deserves to be here. Right. Because like you're looking at fuck, like you could just do that. Yeah. You could do that. You could finish right. your story properly. Yeah. And put your bullshit ad over here. Mm-hmm. Bunch of fucking dummies, man. Here I come. So he, and so he's, Nuke Face is taking his show on the road and he's coming to a town near you. Yes. Beware. And next growth patterns so that's where that's where swamp thing learns to like rebuild himself from scratch and i don't think it takes an issue i think it no. takes i think it takes quite a while uh-huh yeah i'm trying to remember like i know like you were talking about you see like a swamp thing fetus yeah kinda, like like yeah. a little head that, that yeah. has like a high-pitched voice that she <laughs> laughs at yeah which is also that extra cool like album more piece where he's incorporating sound mm-hmm. and it's like it's not spelling out to you that he sounds silly like a muppet mm-hmm. she's like laughing at him like oh you're so cute this jumps out at me right here man randy stradley who would be uh, a lifer i feel like at dark horse comics with uh with a letter in the pages of swamp thing here I'm imagining singing some praises. That's a great little drawing. Yeah, it right is. There. Trying to take a look at some other names to see if there's anybody we recognize, man, because that happens yeah, quite often, man. Column. Is there a letters column in this one? Let's see if we have anybody. A confused fan, I see, man, because they probably wanted just more of the same and they're mm-hmm. getting something a little different. Super cool. So there it is, man. It's the one character... That's co-created by uh, Alan Moore at DC Comics that has not yet been exploited. Jim Lee, you have your marching orders, yeah, he's, man. Yeah, he's going to be in the next Batman movie. Yeah, you know why, man. Because he is uh, the sort of main ingredient of Joker's smile right, poison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Joker just like slid a test tube across Nuke Face's <laughs> body, man. And that's how he gets to put that shit into makeup products and whatnot. Perfumes and things. You good to go? Yeah, I'm good. All right, man. Kayfabers. Jimmy and I are going to be at Heroes Con uh, at the end of this month, June 2022. Like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. Tom, what do you have out there? Um, Check out Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design. Uh, Go to to Patreon.com and check out my Patreon. See some uh, comics that I've been working on. And uh, watch my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Red Room Trigger Warnings Issue 1, 2, 3, or 4 are on the stands as we speak. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Uh, every issue is completely self-contained. So if you see an issue, grab an issue, scoop it up. Uh, you can uh, read these comics on my Patreon right now. Today, 200 pages in the archive uh, every Tuesday, new strips go live, banned in 30 countries, banned in more than 10 comic shops, so get the comics how you can. Uh, We have a Cartoonist Kayfabe spread shop where you can buy Cartoonist Kayfabe merchandise to support the channel, shirts, mugs, tote bags, hats, things like this. Want to see a lot of people adorning uh, the gear, flying the flag. When we're at uh, Charlotte, North Carolina at the end of the month, uh, without further ado, Tom, your guest host with the most here, man. Given the marching orders, we'll be on our way. Make more comics.